Hi, I'm Egil Thorson, and today I'm going to speak about the hammer, Maliolina, and the iron gloves that Thor wore. First of all, how do you say it? Maliolina, Maliolina. Well, it's Maliolina. The y, the y is silent. Although, if you're English, you would pronounce the J. So either way is as good, really. I prefer to call it Maliolina. Others, Maliolina. So. We look at the hammer itself and um, we hear about it in the sagas. The iron gloves, not so much. And as I say, I honestly don't know from whence the iron gloves came. Maybe one of you guys out there can tell us. But what the iron gloves were supposed to do was to enhance the power and strength in Thor, which already was quite considerable. Now the hammer. We all know we see the image of him throwing that hammer and it comes back and this, that and the other. How does he carry it? Well, it shrinks down to pendant size. Yeah, you say, but now is there a ring through the handle or is there a loop on it? One would imagine there was a loop on the handle. But you don't want to, if you drill a hole through the handle, it's going to make it weaker. Or as I would say, compromise the strength. As you can see, I've got couple of Thor's hammers. Some people even say Thor. They tend to be Scandinavians. Again, we're English so we call him Thor. But uh, it's a symbol of our belief in Thor and through the sagas we hear that he would throw the hammer and when you hear thunder rattling that's Thor throwing hammers at the frost giants. It is a defensive weapon, if we're being honest, to protect the gods from the giants. Apparently the giants have got a thing where they're trying to kill the gods, and vice versa. And it all ends up rather unpleasantly in Ragnarok, if you are to believe the sagas, which I don't. Why don't I? Well, there are earlier versions of the sagas which invalidate the so-called premise of Ragnarok. That's another story. We're talking now about Thor's hammer. I know various styles. There's this one. Here's a smaller version. We even have one in Derby Museum that was found at Repton. I'm very impressive it is too. They didn't tend to wear the jewellery like I did. I've got Reenactor Itis. A guy we found the Thor's hammer on in uh, Derby, Repton, had a two beads and he's considered quite a wealthy man this is OTT I'm afraid it's a hangover from reenacting days it seemed to be a competition to see who could get the biggest necklace and most jewellery we draw a veil over that but uh, the Thor's hammer meant a lot to the Norse you could call it if you like the pagan crucifix but they were flexible Eventually, when he came to England, you had to be a Christian. So they took the Thor's hammer off, put a crucifix on, and all was right with the world. After they left, off with the hammer. Then they go to Byzantium and they have the sign of Islam. And basically, he, they would move according to religion. So they were quite uh, flexible in their belief system. So don't take it too literary people just went from paganism to Christianity it's a big thing you today were probably brought up in one faith or another mostly Christian if you're living in Europe and then to change over I mean I was originally a Christian I converted to Odinic religion but even so it's still ingrained within you can't get rid of it. I wouldn't want to get rid of all of it anyway. But uh, the Thor's hammer symbolises your belief in the Norse. You can also wear it for decoration, you know, if you're doing reenactment. We don't suggest that you all uh, do that at all. It's up to you. Okay, we've spoken about the hammer, the gauntlets. But what about the man? What did Thor look like? The Thor we are led to believe he was a very muscular man, heavily muscled, and he had bright red hair. In fact, red hair was seen as a sign of good luck. A 
especially if you're a woman you could pick your own husband what was his temperament like well he was supposed to quick to anger but also quick to laugh it's quite a volatile character you say the wrong thing at the wrong time next thing you know you've got a hammer in your head but at the same time he would defend you to the last drop of his blood if he thought you were being manhandled he was I suppose you could say the protector of the gods he was the go-to guy the only guy who was more powerful than uh, Thor of course would be Odin and he's not always uh, necessarily prepared to do stuff like that but the long red hair was a characteristic and of course his hammer Maljolana his wife long blonde hair most of the time till Loki got hold of her but that's another story in other words we've got a massive family and the protector of the family of course is Thor so what does he do you know he's got his hammer he kills giants he uh, protects those who are needed to be protected he's the god of the farmer he protects crops although occasionally of course bolts of lightning do end up having a blast in the wheat fields it happens today but uh, all in all he was the god of the farmer the worker the everyday person sympathetic to your cause as is whereas Odin is more for warriors and lords and why not so anyway that's that in a nutshell I hope you've enjoyed it there's a lot more to go at with the sagas and histories and things like that always worth a look and as I say the sagas are a rich rich source but take it with a pinch of salt uh, some of them are heavily Christianized and of course you know that's the way of things if you're trying to push your religion you have to mix it with the old religion and make it acceptable but just bear that one in mind as I say the guy who translated the uh, sagas Snowy Sturluson was a bishop so anyway they're well worth looking at good bedtime reading with a nice mug of cocoa what is my favorite story well it's it's the one where Thor poses as the goddess Freya a hammer's been stolen by a giant and he wants Freya to be his wife so he poses as his wife and eats a tremendous amount drinks a tremendous amount they hand him the hammer and he beats the skulls in quite gory but good fun and when he walks back he forgets he's still dressed as a woman and of course they take the mickey out of him which brings him back down to reality there's a moral in all these sort of stories if you care to look for them and that's why they're written but I found that one particularly amusing uh, Thor as I say he's there like all of them is a complex character anyway you judge for yourself you have a read through and maybe you'd like to let us know which one your favorite story is it story is and uh, we can have a chat about it so anyway hope you've enjoyed it I certainly enjoyed telling you and remember I love you but you, you have to put up with it you take care bye